Hello, and welcome to part two of our series of lectures on the circulatory system. And in this lecture, we're going to look at the characteristics and the properties associated with the cardiovascular system vessels. Again, uh, to start out with some generalizations, we'll take a look at the general properties of the arteries. Uh, what we're going to see is still the three layers within the blood vessel, so within the wall. So we got the tunica intima as that innermost layer, the tunica media as the smooth muscle layer, and then the tunica uh, adventitia to the outer region. Now, if we look at the general properties associated with arteries, again, we're looking at a high pressure vessel. So it's gonna be subject to a lot of higher pressure than the blood vessels throughout the rest of the body, the capillaries and the, and the veins. And so it needs to be able to have some strength associated with it. And because it is subject to the, the pressure fluctuation from the heart, it needs to be able to expand and recoil without damage. And so there are gonna be a couple of specializations that we're gonna see within arteries. The first is gonna be an internal elastic membrane or an internal elastic lamina. And this is going to be a layer of elastin, a layer of elastic fibers, which are going to be found between the tunica intima and the tunica media. And so with special stains, especially in the larger arteries, this is going to be very, very prevalent. And so it can help us to identify what we're looking at. And again, the idea is that we want these uh, vessels to be able to expand and recoil without damage. So we need the elastin there for support. Uh, arteries in general are going to have thicker tunica media than veins do. And the reason for that, again, is that we need the smooth muscle cells to be present to allow the cells to, or not the cells, the vessels to expand and recoil without damage. And we also need the smooth muscle cells there to constrict, to regulate the blood flow and control the blood pressure. And then in many of the larger arteries between the tunica media and the tunica adventitia, we're going to have an external elastic membrane or an external elastic lamina again, a layer of elastic fibers that are going to be concentrated in this region. And many of the arteries, again, we're going to see in the tunica media, uh, between the smooth muscle cells, lots of elastic fibers. So we have both the muscle cells for strength and, and support and the elastic fibers for the, the ability to uh, expand and recoil. Okay, so if we take a look at our largest artery, we're essentially looking at the elastic arteries like the aorta and branches of the aorta. Now again, keep in mind, from a functional standpoint, the aorta is going to be subject to a lot of pressure and a lot of pressure uh, variation, fluctuation, because the heart is going to be constructing, very forcefully pumping the blood out into this vessel, and the aorta is going to be expanded. And then when the heart relaxes, we've got all of that blood in there. Without the pressure of the heart pushing it in, the vessel, the aorta's walls are going to recoil down. They're going to essentially come back down to their normal shape and in doing so push the blood through the rest of the body so we have a continuous flow of blood throughout the body even when the heart is relaxing when the heart is refilling. So if we take a look at the characteristics associated with the aorta and the branches of the elastic arteries we've got a tunica media that is much 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 thicker than the adventitia a very very thick smooth muscle well component it's an elastic artery, so we got lots of elastic fibers scattered in essentially between the layers of smooth muscle cells because we need a vessel that can expand and recoil in response to what the heart is doing. If you take a look at the wall structure uh, within the heart, you're going to see that the elastic arteries, these uh, branches of the aorta, are, are going to be very, very thick vessels. We know that the blood is going to be flowing very rapidly throughout the lumen, and it's not going to allow for a lot of exchange to occur. And so what we're going to see within the walls of larger blood vessels, and the best example is from the wall of the aorta, is we're going to have what are referred to as vasa vasorum, vasa for vessel. So we're looking at a vessel within a vessel. And so these are going to be uh, arteries and veins and capillaries that are normally found in the tunica adventitia, and they probably extend in the tunica media, but often more difficult to find. Uh, but they're going to be essentially blood vessels that are coming in from the outside, from the tunica adventitia. They're going to provide oxygen and nutrients to the cells within the blood vessel wall itself. As we said, the tunica media of elastic arteries are going to have lots and lots of smooth muscle cells and lots of elastic fibers within them. And so with an elastic fiber stain on this, you can see a little bit of the internal elastic lamina to the, the far right sitting underneath the, the tunica adventitia. Uh, I'm sorry, the tunica uh, intima. 
Uh, so you got the lumen, that kind of pinkish area, the tooth antima, and then you can see the layers of elastic fibers. You've got a little bit of a concentration at that internal elastic lamina. Now what's going to happen is the blood is going to be transported throughout the aorta, through the branches of the aorta, very rapidly out to the body. And then it's going to go into smaller and smaller vessels, like we've seen before, like with the respiratory system. So muscular arteries are still going to be subjected to a fair amount of blood pressure and fluctuation of the blood pressure. But the muscular arteries are going to be branching off the aorta and the branches of the aorta. And these are going to be like the named arteries within uh, the uh, uh, gross anatomy course. They're going to distribute the blood into the different organs as well as to different regions within the organs. And so what we're going to see is going to be still a classic artery. So we've got the three layers. We've got the tunica antima as the innermost layer, tunica media, the middle layer, tunica adventitia to the outside, that, that bluish staining region on this one. Uh, we've got kind of a scalloped staining appearance uh, because we've got a muscular artery. So normally it's got a little bit of blood pressure within it, kind of inflating it. When you don't have the blood pressure, it's going to collapse down a little bit and give it that kind of, kind of folded or scalloped appearance to the lumen. We can see, because we've got a little bit of elastic fiber stain going in here, we can see the internal elastic lamina. We can see elastin kind of scattered in between um, the, uh, the smooth muscle cells in here. And then a fairly prominent external elastic lamina with this one, that, that dark uh, kind of purplish staining between the tunica media and the tunica adventitia. And then we can see uh, the blue of the collagen staining out there within uh, the tunica adventitia, uh, the connective tissue layer. Now, what's going to happen is those muscular arteries are going to distribute the blood very rapidly to the organs, to different regions of the organs, and then it's going to go into smaller and smaller and smaller vessels, ultimately going into arterioles. And arterioles are going to be the smallest of the artery components within the cardiovascular system. And they're going to be distributing the blood to the capillary beds, and in doing so, they're going to regulate the blood pressure, and they're going to regulate the blood flow. As we're going to see with the capillaries, they're going to be very thin-walled vessels to allow for exchange to occur. And we don't want a lot of blood pressure going through and essentially bursting our capillaries. We want to be able to regulate it. And so what we're going to see is that the arterioles, the wall of the arteriole, is essentially going to be primarily smooth muscle cell. We've still got the endothelial lining within the tunica adventitia. So we've got some endothelial cells there. And then we've got two layers of uh, smooth muscle cell around it. And this allows them uh, to the smooth muscle cells to constrict and really regulate the diameter of the lumen and in doing so regulate what's able to pass through that, drop the blood pressure, slow it down, stop the or decrease the blood flow so we can regulate what's going on as we're going into the capillaries. In this diagram, I'm uh, sorry, this image, we've got a, a muscular artery over here, a nice circular profile, very distinct uh, tunica media, the layers of the smooth muscle. And then we've got a smaller, what will be a venule when we're talking about the other side. Again, most cases we're going to have arteries and veins uh, parallel, uh, running anti-parallel to one another, running close together, arteries out to the, the periphery of the body, veins returning the blood from the body back towards the heart. So after the arterioles, what we're going to see is we're going to get to the exchange mechanism. We're going to get into the capillaries. And so these are going to be the smaller, smallest of the vascular channels within the body. And essentially what they're going to be are going to be tubes of endothelial cells. And so we're not going to have the tunica media. We're not going to have the tunica adventitia. So no muscle cell, none of that uh, dense connective tissue. What we're going to have, in essence, is just these epithelial cells, these endothelial cells, that are going to wrap around very, very thin, simple squamous epithelium, to allow for a very thin barrier that's enough to keep the things that are within the bloodstream within the bloodstream allow diffusion across the, the lining, and then materials from the periphery, from the surrounding tissues, to diffuse back across this and get into the bloodstream. So we want to keep these uh, vessels intact. We want to keep the capillaries um, essentially closed. So we've got a closed circulatory system, but we want to maximize the potential for exchange to occur. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is we're saying that the lumen diameter of a capillary is about five to 10 micrometers. A red blood cell is usually about six and a half or seven micrometers in diameter. And so what we're looking at is basically a vessel in these capillaries where the red blood cells are gonna to have to line up single file to be able to pass through them. And this is gonna cause them to allow for 
maximum diffusion, and it's going to slow them down and allow for an exchange to occur. Uh, and again, that's going to be a, a good mechanism because what we want to do is provide these materials into close proximity to where they're needed so that diffusion can occur. Now, if we take a look at it, as we're saying, the capillary bed is the site of exchange for oxygen, for nutrients, for fluids, ions, metabolites, other substances. So basically what we're looking at is we've delivered these materials out to the location and we're going to allow diffusion to occur. Diffusion works great down its concentration gradient and over very short distances. And so we need these capillary beds, we need these radiators in essence to become very, very close to virtually all of our cells within the body. Now, if we take a look at the basis of exchange, again, we've got these closed vessels. So we've got this uh, intact endothelial lining and then allow for this exchange, we can have diffusion across the, the cells itself, but by having to pass through the endothelial cell, it's gonna slow the process down. So depending upon where we are with the body, we may have some modifications that allow for more rapid exchange materials. And so this may be something like fenestrae. A fenestrae uh, are essentially pores within the endothelial lining. So they're little bitty gaps, which are gonna allow passive diffusion to occur, but of really small molecules. And it's basically regulated in some way. So you can think about the fenestrae of an endothelial cell as being a rough analogy to the ion channels within a cell membrane. Uh, it allows, an ion channel will allow for specific uh, shaped molecules, specific charge molecules, ions to pass through it, and it will block the passage of other things. The fenestrae are you know, a scale larger, but they're still gonna be regulating what can pass through them. Relatively small molecules of specific sizes, shapes, and charges, that type of thing. In other regions, we may have intercellular clefts, and intercellular clefts are actually gaps between neighboring endothelial cells. So we have, essentially have a, a loosening of our epithelial lining and, and gaps which are appearing uh, between the cells. We can have penocytosis, which is regulated movement of uh, plasma or tissue fluid across the membrane, or we could have diapedesis, which is a process where white blood cells, leukocytes, normally within the venules are gonna be able to loosen up the connections and slip between the cells. Now, if we take a look at the different types of capillaries, continuous capillaries are gonna be a smooth lining. Uh, the cells are gonna be tight to one another, and so they're gonna be continuous. So any movement of materials is gonna to have to pass through the cells themselves. Fenestrated capillaries, in this case, we've got very thin pores which are gonna be present in the endothelial lining, and this is gonna allow for more rapid exchange of materials. We can see this in areas like the kidneys and in the intestines. Sinusoidal capillaries, we've got those clefts. We've got gaps between the endothelial cells. We still have fenestrations, but they're not normally uh, needed as much because there's huge gaps between these cells. And so very rapid exchange can be occurring. And we can see that with areas like the liver, the spleen, uh, and the bone marrow. And then ultimately what's gonna happen is that the blood is gonna go through the capillary bed and get into veins. It's going to small veins and then the larger veins and return the blood to the heart. In general, the blood vessel walls in the veins are gonna be much thinner than they are in the arteries. So because of that, they're thinner. They don't have as much structural support within them themselves. They often appear collapsed down uh, in histological specimens. They're more likely to contain erythrocytes or red blood cells because they're gonna be involved with a low pressure. They're gonna be involved with storage of the blood vessels, I'm sorry, of the, of the blood cells. And they're often gonna be valves which are gonna be maintaining the unidirectional blood flow within the system because they're uh, essentially has a lower blood flow coming off of the heart, I'm sorry, off of the capillaries and we still have to return it to the heart. So again, we see venules, relatively thin wall, may have a tunica media of one or two uh, cell layers thick. Adventitia in general, relatively thick, uh, especially in relationship to the tunica media. And venules are gonna be running close to the arterioles. Veins, again, larger structures, but again, the same basic characteristic. Primarily only two or four layers of uh, smooth muscle cells, much thicker tunica adventitia. Uh, in some of the lower blood vessels, uh, lower veins, we can see um, smooth muscle cells arranged longitudinally in the tunica adventitia to provide for support. And so if we have disruption of this uh, support, we can have varicose veins, which are weakening, and so we see the blood essentially pooling down within the veins.
And that finishes up our, our talk of this, uh, vessels. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu.